So after using the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon for about a week now, figured go ahead and give a quick overview of things, both positive and negative. I will say at the beginning of this, most of my stuff, I really think it's overall an amazing printer. Um, it's as close as you can get to plug and play, in my opinion at least. My experience with it with other printers also is a little bit limited. Uh, use a Ender 3 Max before this, and I feel like I was able to dial in the settings fairly well. Not perfectly, but fairly well for the most part. And also do some resin printing with a little Vox Lab that I have, but not nearly as much on that. But anyway, I'd say going over things and the first kind of issue I have with it, it's not really an issue with the performance of the printer or anything. It's just kind of one of those things I noticed and I think is kind of annoying is on a product like this, I don't think you can really have void stickers on this. There was one on the back of the panel when I went to remove it. Um, a piece had popped off when I took it off, when I was trying to take it off the take the bed off, and it kind of fell in the back area. So I had to take the panels off because I couldn't find it back there on my own. With just kind of reaching behind, it kind of tucked behind in the left area. But I had to pop the back off, and I noticed a void sticker on it. Also, when I first got it, and it had the calibration issues initially. Um, on the three pairs of screws that there were, one of each of those pairs had a void sticker on it. So immediately their troubleshooting was telling me to loosen those and tighten them back up, but they have something saying void on it. And I get to Kickstarter and I get that it's not super important right now, but in the future, I really think they need to refrain from putting any void stickers, especially on things like that because it's something that moves, it's something that heats up and vibration and the combination of it, you're gonna have to tighten and loosen things. The back of it's going to have to come off and the off chance that something falls behind it, like in my case, or something comes a little loose and you have to plug it back in, or if you have to replace a fan, just whatever, it's something where I don't think that it should have void stickers anywhere on it because it's gonna stop your everyday people from digging into it. Whereas in my previous ones, you'll see I'm really not afraid to jump into it. I took the entire AMS apart. I'll take anything apart that I need to. I'll avoid it if I can, but if I need to, I'm up for taking it apart. And that brings me to the second thing is easier removal of that back panel. It would be nice to have it maybe as a two-part thing, top and bottom, so you can pop the bottom off real quick um, to get to most of the stuff in the back of it. Um, another thing that I was noticing with it is with the AMS itself, it has, I think that the component where those magnets were is the actual runout sensor. I'm not positive, but that's my assumption. I think it might be better to move the runout sensor to the thing on the back of it where the AMS actually plugs into. That way it kind of senses it there and you're not wasting as much filament and it can just purge it at the end. Or um, if they were to give exact measurements on what the PTFE tubing should be, then the machine would have a better idea of how much of it it can actually use and it'd be able to utilize almost the entire roll. That's kind of an opinion piece, but I think that would be a valuable improvement to it that I think is definitely doable. Another upgrade as far as the AMS goes, I would like to see one of a couple things, if not both. One, make it so you can choose another filament for it to switch to while it's doing it instead of continuing from the same position or give both options, actually. Or another thing, make it so that when you're slicing it, you can designate a spool as a backup spool in case it does run out of filament. Um, just something to consider as well. Another issue that I noticed along the AMS lines is when you plug it into that back sensor, once again, this is a small thing. It's not something huge that really impacts the performance of it, but the clips to remove 
the AMS pin connectors are facing towards the printer. So I think just a minor adjustment on that piece to make it so that the little part that you have to push in to pull out the pin connector should be facing out and not in. So you don't have to use a tool to stick it under or even unscrew it all the way and then unclip it that way because that's just more of a hassle. For the most part, I can't see many reasons to undo the AMS unless it is having issues, but still something worth noting. Uh, going back to the why well, I think another reason to have the runout sensor on that part instead of in the AMS itself is you could, they could very easily add another entry port into it and you could run your free rolls of filament through it and it would have a runout detection through that because I don't see a way for it to notice that it's running out unless it uses the AI part, which honestly the stringing thing I haven't really... It didn't notice it when it did it to the sword when I had the issues. It gave me an alert earlier, but it didn't notice it when it was actually stringing. So, or it also didn't notice it when it ran out of filament and it just wasn't printing. So, something to think about as well. And then, another thing that... I think would improve quite a bit of it and allow you to use more of the build plate. I would like it so that when you load a new filament into it, because it obviously knows when it runs out or when there are issues with it, <coughs> but whenever you take a filament out and then put a new one in to have it ask you if it's the same filament or something like that, because sometimes you might have to pull it out and put it back in and then confirm or deny it but make it so that whenever you have new filament in, it also gives you the option to calibrate that filament right away and then store it in the internal settings. That way each and every print, you're not one wasting filament and two wasting bed space. And for the most part, I'm not doing super huge prints, but that doesn't mean everyone isn't. It would also make it so that when you're doing multi-filament, it would already have it calibrated. Because another thing I noticed is well, it can only use the same material and that's great. Sometimes you might buy different brands at the same time. So it'd be worth it to have them all calibrated and have that calibration in memory so that when it goes to switch filaments, it knows the exact calibration it needs for each filament that's in it before the print even starts. Just kind of something that I think would be a general improvement and I think it can be done. I think that they could achieve this, but it's something that would be on them from the software side and where it would be stored, whether it's the computer, your phone, or the device's internal memory. And it wouldn't really need to hold it for very long because once you put in a new filament and you confirm it's a new filament, it could very easily cycle, delete, and then just write over that old information. Something else that I would like to be able like to see in it would be when you print from the internal memory, because it has different things like the scraper that you can print off and phone stands and little things like that. I think it might be beneficial to make it so that you can select what color you want from what's in the AMS versus how it's telling you to put the certain filament in the role designated. I think that kind of defeats the purpose of the AMS um, where you have multiple in there. If you have to take it out, put it in a new one and then reset it, it would be better if you could just simply say, I want this one to be color number one, this one to be color number two and so on. And something maybe to make it so you can identify and it would just kind of black out all the other things that it's printing except for the color designated so you know what's going to be what color. That part might be a lot more difficult, but just an idea. Um, and kind of one other thing, I'd like to see manual speed control. I like that it has the four speeds, the silent, normal, uh, the f I can't remember what the faster one is, and then ludicrous, but I'd also like to be able to see more fine controls on it because sometimes you might need to go even slower than 50% because you might be doing something that's like lithophanes or the sword or just something with really intricate detail on it that you think I want to slow this down a lot more now that I see what it's doing on it. So just another idea as far as that goes. But 
overall, this printer has done fantastically. Uh, the little clip of the lithophane that I did, if you hop onto Google, you can kind of find that image pretty easily if you wanted to do that one yourself. It was one of the cooler ones that I liked. Um, for lithophanes in particular, it did have some issues with this one versus, um, I think it's more of the slicer issue, but versus my Ender or even versus the Vox Lab that I have but it kind of did some things in slicing where it completely removed where the moon was in some instances when I tried bringing it to finer detail. So some things that they can improve on with the slicer. I know this is kind of a one-off type thing as far as lithophanes go, but I can see where it might come up with other things as well. So overall the slicer though is pretty simple. Most part I drag drop and do very little to the settings. As I've said before, this printer really just kind of excels wonderfully. With the multicolor, it has the option to purge into infill. And I found that that option actually works fairly well. Um, I was able to weigh the poop that it shoots out of the back of it. And the first time it was like 16 grams or so. and I only did one of the little Pi Games dice with that print, and then when I did two of them, it came, it brought it down to about 12. So another improvement that I'd like to see would be, because there are some prints where I don't care what color it is or what it is, some fidget spinner stuff or fidget cubes or just little things in general, I think it would be better to purge all of it into another little object that I can have that I don't care about the colors on and waste less of it because I can gift those out. I can just kind of have them as novelty things and it has more value as that than as little strings. But overall, this printer, it really is amazing for all the things that I sit here and say. And once again, it's a Kickstarter. I get that. Um, even then it surpasses my ender easily. Like it is the simplest thing that I've used. Once it's working, it just, it goes. Um, I've seen some people saying the advantage for it is the speed and stuff like that. In my opinion, the advantage is not the speed. And in most cases I tend to go on silent mode and slow it down. The advantage in my opinion is you really don't have to do anything to it. You can drag drop and your prints are ready. You don't have to calibrate your flow settings or anything like that. It takes care of all of it. The speed is nice and it definitely, even when I'm slowing it down, it surpasses my print, my old printer by far. It prints super fast, even when slowed down. But for most of my stuff, I do slow it down. I tend to keep it around 100 in between 100 and 200 millimeters per second for most stuff, just because I run it on the silent usually. And even when I'm running it on standard at 200, it does really well. Some other little testing that I've done, I've done some experiments with the build plate. I found that blue painter's tape, while you can use it, it'll spit out a bunch of errors, which kind of brings me to another small complaint is the errors that they have, it's kind of hard to follow them sometimes. I think including plain English where the numbers are instead of having like just a blob of numbers would help out quite a bit. They're improving this like you can see in the little text blocks below it where it's showing you that information, but to have it more readily and where you can see it easier, I think would be a big improvement. But I've also tried hairspray and that was kind of hit or miss. I've tried using nothing and that was hit or miss too. Uh, every time I've used the glue stick with the exception of the one sword, I don't think I've had a failure yet. So it does a really good job as long as you're using glue stick. I still need to test if any glue stick works or if they have something proprietary about the glue stick that they had, I wouldn't think so, but it's something worth checking and I'll be seeing that in a few days as well. But as far as prints goes, I've had very little cleanup on any of them. Uh, 
want to say the worst cleanup I had was on the dragon that was on the painter's tape, but that's because it was pet G and the only issue that I actually had with it was the brim and kind of cutting it around around the base because it didn't just kind of pull off as close to the part as it did with PLA. But <coughs> other than that, I really don't have anything else to add. This printer performs very well. It does it very fast and it requires next to no calibration. Uh, some people have asked about the if the AMS is worth it. In my opinion, if you can afford it, it's worth it. If you can't, it's really not a necessity. It's just one of those nice things that makes life easier when it's working properly. But that's all I got. Have a good one.